G'day humans, Chris Dad from Finder here, and today we've got some exciting news. Sony has finally unlocked the expansion bay for expanding your hard drive, your internal hard drive space on the PlayStation 5 console, yay! Uh, it's been a long wait, especially for those of us who like Call of Duty, which takes up pretty much the entire, or at least a third of the internal storage on this thing. Being able to expand is gonna be great for gamers who wanna have more than just a handful of games on their console at any one time, and be able to play them. Now, I've just finished writing a comparison article on the best SSDs available for the PlayStation 5, which is on the finder.com.au website. And I'm gonna to refer to that article a bit during this, so make sure you click the link below and jump on and take a look, because you're gonna see all my data there uh, and a comparison of all the cards that I'm gonna talk about. Now, these are the little beauties that you need. Look at the size of it. Can you believe it's four terabytes of space on that one? That's the Fire Cooter 530 there. I've got these three in at the moment, which I'm going to be reviewing in greater detail in the future. But uh, when I went through and kind of looked at all the SSDs that were PS5 compatible that are available in the Australian market, as of the day that they unlocked the launch of the expansion bay, I found 28 cards uh, from 11 different manufacturers. So there's a fair bit of choice there. And look, comparing them at this point, is reasonably challenging that given that we've only just got access to them and we don't really know how they're gonna behave in the PlayStation 5. However, I did do a comparison of all the stats behind them, which you can compare on that article I was talking to in, a, uh, in a, before. And I did a bit of analysis there and there's two ways I kind of approached it um, just to kind of get a quick snapshot of what might be the best value for money. Now the first is obviously looking at just the uh, cost per gigabyte of the maximum storage space you get for the outlay and money and these things are quite expensive I'm going to admit I think that the the one I was just showing you for the, the four terabytes uh, Firecooter may even be over a thousand bucks. So you're paying a bit of money there uh, What um, I compared them for when I did the gigabytes per cost uh, Is that I found that the top one was actually the Adata XPG 77 S70 blade um, end up being the best value for money at the moment. And look, the, the thing about doing a cost per gigabyte analysis is that prices change. And I'll talk about the prices a little bit more in the, uh, a little bit later on, but um, so they can change over time. But that was a pretty clear leader by a stretch actually. Uh, and we also saw the Crucials, the uh, Sabrents doing quite well, performing quite well. And even one of the Samsungs, the two gigabyte Samsung proved quite good in terms of the cost per gigabyte. However, you also have to uh, can factor in the actual read speeds. Now read speeds is a pretty important part of the PlayStation 5 upgrade path for the SSDs. You've got to have a base minimum of 5,500 megabytes a second in terms of read speed. Uh, most of these puppies can go up to 7,000, even slightly above 7,000, so they're pretty good. But I did an analysis where I looked at the read speeds of every single one of these drives, and I also looked at the write speeds, the difference between the two, so how much how close the write speed is to the read speed. And look, there's a lot more that goes into this in terms of like how the cache behaves when it's been loaded and how well that speed holds up over periods of reading or writing uh, that you need to consider as well. But just taking a quick snapshot, I looked at the read, I looked at the write, the difference between the two, the difference of the read versus the minimum for the PlayStation 5. And then I also plugged in an algorithm also included as part of that the cost per gigabyte as well to find out what the best value, um, best value SSD is as of the launch of the expansion bay. And the Adata XPG S70 Blade came on top again. Uh, and it's certainly a well reviewed drive. So I definitely a contender there to think about. Also, um, the Seagate Firecooter started coming into play then because why their cost per gigabyte wasn't that um, competitive probably mid-range, um, what happened was when you start looking at the read and write speeds, it really does start to compete and starts to come into its own. They've got all 28 cars listed on the website, so definitely click on that article and you can examine all of them and take your own takeaway from all the raw data when it's right there presented in front of you. But there are some other things you also need to consider. Um, Heatsink's the big one. So some of these, for example, you can see here, we've got the 980, the 980 um, Pro from Samsung. Uh, and that has no heatsink, whereas the Firecooter and the WD Black here both have heatsinks. Um, now, you need a heatsink for it to be able to work, and that heatsink can't be uh, more than, I think it's 11 mils um, in height as well. So, 
On that list that I've showed, talked to you about on the website, I list which ones come with heatsinks and which ones don't come with heatsinks. If you get one without a heatsink, you can buy a heatsink and mount one, it's not impossible. Um, and there are some options that I've provided where there is a heatsink already, but it's too big. So you're gonna have to take it off and get another heatsink and put it on. Um, in my opinion, that's a lot of fuss and a lot of hassle. I'd be just shooting for one that does have a heatsink. Um, but you know, uh, if you've already got one, for some reason you bought it for your PC or you bought it too early because I feel like the need for a heatsink was quite a late announcement from Sony, not just to consumers, but also to the manufacturers. I think a few of them were caught out by surprise there. So um, that is why we're seeing some without heatsinks. Now, I also wanna give you a couple of tips when you're buying, especially here in Australia, and it's probably like this elsewhere in the world, but obviously we were in the middle of COVID at the moment, and there's been lots of stock supply shortages on a range of technology. Uh, and we're seeing some stock shortages here in Australia. So while I've done this comparison based on the recommended retail price where I could, um, I've seen prices both below but also above that when I've been examining different prices across the likes of Amazon and eBay and our local PC retailers, our PC hardware retailers here in Australia. So I think there's some demand and supply issues there and that you might see some prices fluctuate in that. So be careful of that when you're looking. Also be wary that some of these um, some of these SSDs have very similar names to previous generations. So for example, the, the Crucial P5 doesn't have enough read and write speed to be considered for the PlayStation 5, but the P5 Plus does. Um, and, just a, and when you're looking at it when it's on a, on a shop front and it's got NVMe, M.2, Gen 4, X4, SSD and a gigabyte, that's a lot to take in and it's very easy to lose that plus. So if you see, if you think you found a card that's listed at a better price, just double check because chances are you might be looking at a Gen 3 instead of a Gen 4 or and, and the read speed is just not going to be there and it's not going to work. So be careful of that. And also be careful because of these stock shortages at the moment that you might find yourself thinking, hey, I've got a bargain here, but you're actually buying from an international seller and you might end up getting stung with import uh, fees, extra shipping costs, or potentially it'll just take a long time to get to you. Like it could take a month or even longer at the moment. I've seen some huge delays with some of the products that's been coming to me to review from overseas, just getting here into Australia at the moment with COVID. So those are some tips on how, uh, the buying process. Like I said, make sure you head over to find.com.au. You can check out the entire table with all the information for the 28 cars that are available at the launch of the PlayStation 5. As for me, I'm going to plug this baby back in and start downloading some more games to this 4 terabyte awesome SSD.